The cape is a longtime royal favorite, and not only in the fantasy land of Snow White and Cinderella. The word conjures up Tudor England, kings and queens storming around court, furious, naturally, velvet cape tails trailing behind them in dramatic fashion. Yet the cape is very much here and now. And on Tuesday, the Princess of Wales demonstrated the royal's continued taste for the style, stepping out in a Catherine Walker red cape over a matching dress. Strangely for an item so regal, the cape, a stylized version of the cloak, has utilitarian roots. Several European armies included capes as part of their uniforms until well into the 1900s. But in the 1950s, fashion co-opted the cape as its own, to the benefit of women everywhere. Cropped capes that finished at the waist became ubiquitous. They were less bulky than a coat and showed off the nipped-in waist of the full-skirted Norman Hartnell dresses of the era. After a cape hiatus in the second half of the 20th century, Christopher Bailey sent model of the moment Cara de Levingner down his OR 2014 Burberry catwalk in a cape embroidered with her initials. An immediate sell-out and months-long waiting list ensued. It was official. The cape was back. The then Duchess of Cambridge wore a cape detail Burberry coat in February 2019, easing herself into the dramatic look. The cape's style lies in its drama. Its clean lines, unruined by superfluous lines and sleeves, make it inherently dramatic. The cape is an unapologetic fashion statement. The elegance created by its seamless shape makes it smart enough to wear over evening wear where a coat would look too casual. Princess Diana knew this, wearing a black velvet cape over evening dresses several times in the 80s. It's the only item of outerwear that didn't look out of place next to her dazzling tiaras. Barbers don't really go with gobstopper emerald chokers from the royal collection, darling.